Hello friends, we are surrounded by so many different types of organisms having different characteristics. Just think, if somebody asks us to identify these organisms seeing their characteristics individually, that is one by one, do you think it will be a possible and very easy task? It will be almost impossible, isn't it? To solve this problem and to make the study easy and systematic, taxonomists have developed a process. What is that process? They have categorized different types of organisms into different groups. For doing this, they have taken different criteria. For example, depending on the nutrition, organisms have been divided into two broad groups, heterotrophs and autotrophs. Heterotrophs are those organisms which cannot prepare their food by themselves. Fungi belongs to this category. Autotrophs are those organisms which can prepare their food by photosynthesis. Green plants, all of them belong to this category. Depending on the size of the plant and complexity of the plant body as well as the reproductive organs, plants have been divided into five other groups. These are Thallophyta, Braophyta, Teidophyta, Gymnosperms and Angiosperms. Today we will learn about the characteristics of these organisms one by one. For doing this, we require some of the substances or materials. These are dissection microscope or magnifying glass, fresh or preserved specimens of Spidogyra, mushrooms or agaricus, mosses, some blocks of preserved specimens of mosses, ferns, pinus, needle, cone as well as some angiospermic plants. First in this category, we will be finding mushrooms. This belongs to group fungi. Let's see what characteristics they possess. Our first specimen is here, agaricus. Agaricus is macroscopic and has got a soft and fleshy body. The part of agaricus which is found above the ground is called as fruiting body. So this is the fruiting body of agaricus and it can be divided into two parts. This lower cylindrical part which is called as stalk or stipe and upper umbrella shaped cap like structure which is called as pileus. In young condition, this umbrella shaped structure and the stipe remains attached by a thin membranous part which is called as veil. When it grows up, the this pileus moves upward and the veil ruptures and the veil remains attached in the form of a ring like membranous structure around the stipe which is called as annulus. On the lower side of pileus is present several structures which are called as gills. These gills produce pores. These characteristics are typical fungal characteristics for which agaricus has been kept in the group fungi. So our next specimen is a member of algae group. Here we have taken Spidogyra as the specific specimen. Spidogyra can be seen with naked eyes when they are present in large numbers, but uh, to see their detailed structure we have to use microscope. Spidogyra is an aquatic organism found in freshwater bodies like ponds, rivers, lakes, etc. As it is green in color, so you can well understand it is autotrophic by nature. In Spidogyra, we find that plant body is not differentiated into any roots, stems or leaves. Spidogyra possesses a filamentous structure made up of many cells. Each cell is rectangular in shape. Most part of the cell contains a vacuolar structure which is present at the center. At the center of the vacuole is present a nucleus. One or more 
ribbon shaped chloroplast bands are present peripherally and this chloroplast is arranged spirally which gives the name of the algae as spirogyra. Next group is Braophyta. Here we have taken a sample of moss which belongs to Braophyta. You might have seen this sp specific specimen during rainy season. They grow on your garden on the sides of that wet tubs etc. In this case the plant body is very small and hardly differentiated into roots, stems and leaves. You can take a specific a few plants with the help of forceps and place on the slide can and observe either under dissecting microscope or with the help of a magnifying glass. Here I have placed it under dissection microscope and you can find its characteristics. When you find it in details, you will find that small plant body has got few structures. It has got basically three different parts. The first part is um, equivalent to stem, it is called as a central axis. The central axis is short, upright and green in color. From the central axis comes out flattened, spirally arranged, very small leaves which gives the color of moss plants rich green color. From the base of the central axis comes out rhizoids. Rhizoids are very thin, long and multicepted structures which helps the plant to get attached with the soil and absorbs nourishment from the soil. On maturation, central axis bears capsular structures. The, inside these capsules are present spores which on bursting fall on the ground and gives rise to new funeria plants. Next, let us study the characteristics of the group Teidophyta. We have taken fern as a representative of this group. Fern plant grows throughout the year in damp and shady places. Here the plant body is differentiated well enough into roots, stems and leaves. As we find here, there is an underground stem which is short and stumpy and remains horizontally placed under the ground. Such kind of stem is called as rhizome. From the base of the stem have come out fibrous adventitious roots which are present in clusters. From the adventitious buds present on the stem have come out large number of leaves. These leaves are very large, green in color and they are compound leaves. On the underside of the leaves in drier seasons are present spore bearing structures called as sporangia. Fern plants have got a very special characteristics which you can find in its leaves. Actually, you can say that by seeing these characteristics, you can know whether the plant is stadophyte or not. In young condition, these leaves remain in coiled condition just like watch spring. That is a very important characteristic of stadophyte. This kind of coiling is called as sarcinate tyxis. Next, we'll study about a representative of gymnosperm. Here we have taken pinus as a representative. Now see when we talk uh, about Kashmir or any other cold places, what first comes to your mind? Pyramidal shaped long upright plants growing on the hills, isn't it? These plants are pine trees or scientifically called as pine plants, pine trees. So as I have told you, these plants or pine plants, they grow on cold climatic conditions. They grow on mountain slopes as well as in any hilly area in upright condition.
pine trees are well differentiated into roots, stems and leaves. Stem is upright, strong, branched structures. Roots are unbranched, single and grows down in the soil. There are two types of leaves, scale leaves as well as foliage leaves. Scale leaves are flattened, short, brown structures, whereas foliage leaves are long, cylindrical, green in color and needle shaped, so commonly called as pinus needles. They arise only on branches. Pine trees bear reproductive organs which are normally called as cones. Male cones are small, soft and arise in bunches, whereas female cone is present individually, it's large and it is hard and woody when mature. Let us come to the next group that is the group of angiosperms. Most of the plants which you see around you, they are angiospermic plants. So it will uh, proves that angiospermic plants are very advanced and they are ruling this earth. Angiospermic plants are found in almost every kind of habitat. The plant body of angiospermic plants are well differentiated into roots, stems, leaves, flowers and fruits. Here we find these angiospermic plants can be broadly divided into two categories again. They are dicot plants and they are monocot plants. In both the cases, we find several characteristics. Say for example, the stem in case of dicot plants bears very well defined nodes and internodes. Leaves come out only from nodal region. Roots of angiospermic plants may be taproot or that may be adventitious roots. Angiospermic plants bear very well developed bright colored flowers in general and they bear fruits. This fruit bearing characteristic is most important in case of angiospermic plants. Fruits enclose seeds within them. Angiospermic plants have well developed roots. These roots are of two different types. In case of dicot plants, there are tap root system which is single and very strong. Whereas in case of monocot plants, there are adventitious roots which are the, you do not find here a single strong root but there is a bunch of fibrous roots. So today we have learnt different types of characteristics of different groups of plants as well as fungi. I hope friends this will help you in categorizing different types of plants which you see around you systematically and easily. Thank you.